starting in correct running order at the Manfield race circuit. Brooks. Donald. Division 3 started late on Monday afternoon and before long it's dusk and the drivers are again battling with night conditions. The last 11 stages take the cars across the North Island before heading south through small towns like Dannyburg. Here it's an opportunity to refuel and service viewed by hundreds of curious townsfolk. Incredibly, Dermot Malley and Car 37 are still going strong. They had to work hard on the car at Palmerston North, but they've been allowed to stay in the rally. Co-driver Jim Kidd nurses the finger he broke in the rollover 60 hours earlier. <laughs> rally leader Russell Brooks is beginning to stretch his lead, but now he's had some problems. Well, I picked up a stomach bug or something like that last night. I've been feeling pretty rough today. Uh, I was sick halfway through the last stage, which doesn't help matters, but it would seem that we're about four minutes quicker than Rod Millen and about four minutes quicker than Jim. Jim went off for about a minute or two minutes or something like that. So you're safely ensconced at the front now. Uh, this, tr this trouble here? No, it's the starter motors packed up and they're changing that because obviously if you did stall it on the stage, you could lose a lot of time with that one. Um, I wouldn't say safely ensconced, but certainly seven minutes is better than three. Brooks's stomach upset certainly doesn't slow him down as he leaves the field into the longest night of the rally. Approaches, Brooks is still firmly in control of the rally, his lead now an impressive eight minutes. And at least one of his challengers, Rod Millen, is well out of the reckoning. Millen pushed it too hard in an attempt to close the gap with the leaders and put his car right over a bank and almost right out of the rally. We were very fortunate where we did go off. Uh, we actually thought we'd be well out of the rally because we only had an hour to get it back on the road and we figured we were too far down, we'd need a crane to get it back out. But um, I ran down the road and got about 30 guys and we tied a big rope around the front of it and hauled it back on the road. How much spare time do you have now? Well, we've only got an extra two minutes and if we, if we arrive late at any control, more than two minutes now, we're out of the event. Millen does survive to the end, but well down in the finishing order. Now, barring mishaps, Massport looks secure. For the service crew, a last check over at Masterton before the final stages into Wellington. It looks as though Brooks and Donald will lead the cars home. Um, no, the way the car's running at the moment, it shouldn't be a problem. Everything's working good. Um, as long as I don't get too tired and go to sleep somewhere along the line dawn in the wire wrapper as the remaining cars line up to tackle the penultimate stage of the rally but not before some last minute drama this is the lead car its purpose to clear the road before the stage is run 
but on this bend, it met its match. The stage won't be started until the lead car emerges at the finish, so spectators lend a hand to get it back on the road. Then Russell Brooks leads the rally through. Donald is still there trying, but he's too far back. Even in the early hours of the morning, spectators dot the hillside. The motor guards attracted a lot of interest wherever it's gone. Tony Street's still going despite his role the day before. And once again, Dermot Malley's incredibly redesigned escort appears. Nothing will stop them now from finishing the rally. By now, 40 cars are left in the motor guard. This is Tony Teasdale. He's been near the top throughout the event. Adams is still in the running. His escort gets some last-minute attention before heading for Wellington and the final stage, Pikokariki Hill. Right now, though, the stage has become a formality, a virtual victory lap for Russell Brooks, ahead now by a convincing margin. Well, we knew the conditions were going to be very different, and what we intended to do was to take it relatively easy, stay in touch with whoever was leading. If we found ourselves in a leading position, obviously that would be all well and good. And what we wanted to do was try and pull out a lead in the second division, um, which Jim helped us to a certain extent by getting a puncture. Uh, but of course we finished the second division with a three minute lead, and since then it's gone up to about 11 minutes. team are doing an excellent job preparing it. Uh, it's a really super car. Um, I personally couldn't have asked for anything more, really. Uh, we had a bit of clutch trouble, um, but then, you know, you're pushing the cars to the limit, you're pounding them over rocks, driving them as hard as possible. You always expect some trouble. All I can say about the car is that I was there on the, uh, on the winning ramp, so it's done a very, very good job. Rounding off the 1-2 for Massport, Jim Donald finishing in the same style that's characterised his driving throughout the event. Third, Paul Adams. After slipping back earlier, he's worked his way up, but he's still 45 minutes behind Brooks. Teammate John Wolf, fourth in the other vinyl top escort. A great team effort. Fifth, Tony Teasdale of Tokoroa. He never lost touch with the leaders. And sixth, David Parks, a great effort in a car that produces only half the power of the other leading cars. But there's only one winner, and to the victor, the spoils. Brooks drove the race exactly as he predicted, and for him, the champagne looked almost a certainty from the very beginning. The experience he's gained of New Zealand conditions will work in his favour next year if he returns for the 79 motorguard hopefully then restored to a bona fide world championship event.